Interviews with Tapestrists, Volume 18, Kerem's Heart of Anakinia, by Levilis Peres, Professor at the Imperial University. Contemporary with Makamat Lusain, interviewed in Volume 17 of the series, is the Kajiti Kerem, whose tapestries have been hailed as masterpieces all over the empire for nigh on 30 years now. His four factories, located throughout elsewhere, make reproductions of his works, but his original tapestries command stellar prices. The emperor himself owns 10 Kerem tapestries, and his representatives are currently negotiating the sale of five more. The muted use of color contrasted with the luminous skin tones of Kerem's subjects is a marked contrast with the old style of tapestry. The subjects of his work in recent years have been fabulous tales of the ancient past, the gods meeting to discuss the formation of the world, the Chimmer following the prophet Veloth into Morrowind, the wild elves battling Morihas and his legions at the White Gold Tower. His earliest designs dealt with more contemporary subjects. I had the opportunity to discuss with him one of his first masterpieces, The Heart of Anakina, at his villa in Orkgrest. The Heart of Anakina presents the historic battle of the Five-Year War between Elsewire and Valenwood, which raged from 3rd Era 394 or 3rd Era 395, depending on what one considers to be the beginning of the war, until 3rd Era 399. In most fair accounts, the war lasted four years and nine months, but artistic license from the great epic poets added an additional three months to the ordeal. The actual details of the battle itself, as interpreted by Kerim, are explicit. The faces of 120 wood elf archers can be differentiated one from the other, each registering fear at the approach of the Khajiiti army. Their harbors catch the dim light of the sun. The menacing shadows of the elsewhere battle cats loom on the hills, every muscle strained, ready to pounce in command. It is not surprising that he got all the details right, because Kerem was in the midst of it, as a Khajiiti foot soldier. Every minute part of the Khajiiti traditional armor can be seen in the soldiers in the foreground. The embroidered edging and the striped patterns on the tonics, each lacord plate on loose-fitting leather in the elsewhere style, the helmets of cloth and fluted silver. Karim does not understand the point of plate mail, said Karim. It is hot, for one, like being both burned and buried alive. Karim wore it at the insistence of our Nord advisors during the Battle of Zelenin, and Karim couldn't even turn to see what my fellow Khajiit were doing. Karim did some sketches for a tapestry at the Battle of Zelenin, but the Karim finds that to make it realistic, the figures came out very mechanical, like iron golems or Dwemer centurions. Knowing our Khajiiti commanders, Karim would not be surprised if giving up the heavy plate was more aesthetic than practical. Elsewhere lost the Battle of Zelenin, didn't she? Yes, but elsewhere won the war, starting at the next battle, the heart of Anakina, said Sherim. Karim with a smile. The tide turned as soon as we Khajiit sent our Nordic advisors back to solitude. We had to get rid of all the heavy armor before heavy armor they brought to us and find enough traditional armor our troops felt comfortable wearing. Obviously, the principal advantage of the traditional armor was that we could move easily in it, as you can see from the natural stances of the soldiers in the tapestry. Now, if you look at this poor perforated Cathay rat, who just keeps battling on in the bottom background, you see the other advantage. It seems strange to say, but one of the best features of traditional armor is that an arrow will either deflect completely or pass all the way through. An arrowhead is like a hook made to stick where it strikes if it doesn't pass through. A soldier in traditional armor will find himself with a hole in his body and the bolt on the other side. Our healers can fix such a wound easily if it isn't fatal. But if the arrow still remains in the armor, as it does with heavier armor, the wound will be reopened every time the fellow moves, unless the Khajiit strips off the armor and pulls out the arrow, which is what we had to do at the Battle of Zelenin. A difficult and time-consuming process in the heat of battle, to say the least. I asked him next, is there a self-portrait in the battle? Yes, Karim said with another grin. 
you see the small figure of the Khajiit stealing the rings off the dead wood elf. His back is facing you, but he has a brown and orange striped tail like Karim. Karim does not say that all stereotypes about the Khajiit are fair, but Karim must sometimes acknowledge them. The self-deprecating style and self portraiture is also evident in the tapestries of Renolf Hook, the next artist interviewed in volume 19 of this series. <laughs>